Welcome back adventurers, once again, to Let's Play Chaos Egg. In the previous episode, Takami finally decided to leave his base of operations in the Kurunai building because he needed to attend Suome Private Academy on this day of days. Otherwise he would mess up his uh, very meticulous minimum attendance chart that he uh, painstakingly drafted for himself in order to spend as little time at Tsunmei as possible but still get the minimum amount of uh, credits needed to graduate. And trying to pretend that he's less than air while being in the classroom, Takumi was uh, well, greeted, and by greeted I of course mean accosted, by one of the only classmates who would ever interact with him, Daisuke Misumi, the person who is uh, currently standing in front of uh, Takumi's desk here. And despite listening to uh, Misumi's um, classroom gossip, Takumi was uh, more than a little taken aback by the fact that Daisuke was actually interested in the new gen murders. Of course, Daisuke's reasoning, the fact that the uh, serial killer is a woman, is his only motivation for being interested in the slightest, much to uh, Takumi's uh, non-shock. But we actually have, uh, we have a choice, or should I say three choices, because at the end of the previous episode I gave a brief layman's uh, explanation as to how the delusion mechanic actually works in Chaos Head, but I'll repeat it here for good measure. The green uh, ECG monitor um, allows Takami to experience a positive or good delusion, although how it, exactly how good it is is a matter of perspective. The red erratic ECG monitor in the top right corner forces Takami to endure a uh, bad delusion, and bad is a grievous understatement. In fact, uh, Chaos Head actually makes no bones about saying that Red delusions can be downright trippy at times. And of course, uh, the third option is to basically just carry on the conversation um, in reality like normal, and thus encounter no delusions whatsoever. Now these delusions may, well, they may not have an impact in terms of gameplay, but they will alter Takumi's perspective on the uh, reality that's before him. So it's very similar to the text messages that Rintaro Okabe gets on his phone in uh, Steinsgate and Steinsgate Zero, as I uh, previously mentioned. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to showcase what happens when Takumi experiences a good delusion, a bad delusion, and no delusion at all. Which uh, requires me doing a bit of work behind the scenes. Now, uh, this is even more tedious due to the fact that in later chapters of Chaos Head, specifically chapters 6, 7, and I believe maybe 8, there is actually a uh, bug in the patch, which uh, whilst you can save uh, during the events of Chaos Head during those chapters, you cannot load the save, because due to the bug in the patch, uh, Chaos Head will undoubtedly crash. Now, uh, in this instance, up until chapter 6, I can uh, basically show you everything, uh, good delusions, bad delusions, and reality without too much trouble. But since I'm pretty much going to have to be starting all over again from chapter 6 onwards, that is going to be tedious, but I'm just going to have to grit my teeth and work through it. But, uh, we're actually going to, uh, Takumi is going to experience the positive delusion first. And of course, the, uh, selecting one or the other, um, ECG monitors will cause them to disappear, but believe, yeah. Things will change. 
So I squeezed out my voice with the intention of somehow refusing him, but he wouldn't listen. Because of course he doesn't. So and you genuinely believe that that's a uh, good thing. Daisuke, if that were actually the case, then uh, I would uh, refer to you as. Well, you have the power of foresight, if that turns out to be true. You would also be designated as creepy by both Takumi and myself, despite uh, Takumi's feelings towards people calling others creepy in the previous episode. <laughs> of course, Takumi has no words for Daisuke right there. Of course, there was no reason for me to want to see blood or anything. That kind of thing is too terrifying. It wasn't a haunted mansion type attraction or horror film. People were being killed in real life, and the perpetrator still hadn't been caught. And if Shogun is to be believed, and he most certainly is, or she, we don't know what Shogun's actual identity is at this point, the murders will continue to escalate and increase. I didn't want to go anywhere that might be even a tiny bit dangerous. Even so, I found myself wondering about the new gen criminal's motive. Surprise, surprise. Were the incidents pleasure killings by someone with a couple of screws loose in his, his or her head? It might be most fitting to think along those lines. Well, whatever. It had nothing to do with me. By the way, I'm also a mass murderer. Despite having killed so many, I'm treated as a hero, like a hero nonetheless. Inside, Ensu that is, lol. That's an interesting way of looking at things. That comparison alone is enough to prove that the 2D world is unquestionably better than the real world. While frantically turning down Mishimi kun's invitation, I internally pictured myself throwing one straight punch after another. A murderer, you'd say. I'd smash a guy like that to pieces the second I met him. By sinking into delusion th delusions like that, I was capable of killing or saving anyone. Inside your head, or the 2D world, of course. Someone who tried to enact it in real life would be a pure idiot for not thinking about the consequences. Even the new gen killer would have to be caught pretty soon. And after being put in jail for several decades, they'd get executed. I wanted to tell that killer. Ah uh ah, -uh, if only you'd stuck to doing it in your imagination and left it at that. And we get a bit of a flash there, um, some weird symbols there, and uh, also got a glimpse of something uh, rather curious. I went out to buy dinner. Uh, we're apparently uh, in an alleyway somewhere. It's dark and it's blurry. I was on the road to the neighborhood convenience store I usually frequent. It's about three minutes from my base by foot. Familiar scenery, a filthy street. But unlike any other day, today I was attacked by the peculiar sensation that I'd gotten lost in an altogether different... That I'd gotten lost in a different world altogether. I got those words mixed up in my head when I was saying them. But yeah, the uh, swaying vision there seems to think that this is, has a slight surreal feel to it. Although the scenery itself hadn't changed, it was as if I was setting foot in this place for the first time. Apparently this is called uh, Yame Vu. I've looked it up online before, as opposed to Deja Vu. Also, the rotten stench of raw garbage was floating in the air. 
The seeping moisture that clung to my skin was enough to make me mistakenly believe that it, or think that it was raining. The air seemed to paste itself to me. A sound. I faintly heard the sound of something being dragged along. And the atmosphere just got creepy all of a sudden. I stopped my feet and listened closely. Huh? Something is definitely moving. The sound was coming from the depths of a narrow alley that bent away to the left of where I was standing. Or so it had seemed, anyway. There were no street lamps, and no light came from the nearby houses. Which is why I couldn't quite tell what lay at the end of the road, even if I strained my eyes. Whatever it is, Takami Nishijo, it's getting closer. Much closer. To think that a place of such deep darkness could be found in modern Japan, not to mention in Tsubuya, which is right up there with Shinjuku when it comes to being labelled a city that doesn't sleep. So, Shibuya pretty much is, uh, the Japanese equivalent of, uh, New York. It even has the reputation. It was kind of like being in a haunted house, except we're not in the house, we're on the streets. No, there was one aspect in which it differed conclusively from a haunted house. That was the fact that this darkness wasn't man-made. I didn't want to go there. It would be better not to go there. But once again, but thou must. In my heart I kept warning myself. I thought it was going to say something there, but we instead moved closer. But if, as if I was being sucked in by the sound that continued unbroken, my feet took an inexplicable step forward. I feared that something awful would happen if I kept going. My heart rightly pounded violently, and greasy sweat poured down my forehead. And closer still. That was a girl's voice. And the, uh, movement has stopped. Someone let forth a lovely noise. It reached my ears as a whisper. And that someone suddenly grabbed my forearm. It was so abrupt that I fell into a panic and tried to scream. But it wouldn't come out, and it took all my strength merely to expel air from my throat. Terror made me want to want to run away any second now. But my body wouldn't listen to me. My feet froze on the spot and wouldn't move a millimeter. Also because of the fact that whoever it is has currently grasped Takumi's arm, he wouldn't be able to run no matter uh, what he did hand of the person gripping my arm. It entered my field of vision. It was deep green and thin as a mummy's, with countless veins protruding, and didn't look at all like it belonged to someone living. That green arm reminds me of the uh, jellified corpses from Steins Gate. The uh, unfortunate um, CERN test subjects that were sent back in time and uh, liquefied through the event horizon. It truly wouldn't have been strange for me to fall on my ass right there and lose control of my bladder. Yet her voice was oddly easy on the ears, and my erupting fear steadily came under control. Way beyond here is dangerous, that low tense voice. I slowly turned around. Wait. The first thing that flew into my eyes was the Suome Academy emblem. And whoever this is has, uh, covered in blood and has, uh, rather odd colored hair. It's something that's sewn onto the breast of all Suome uniforms. I could tell that she was a girl from the fact that she was wearing a skirt. Also by the, uh, pitch of her voice. 
But I didn't have the courage to look at the most important part, her face. Because she was standing closer than I expected, it took all my effort to, evade, to avert my eyes. Something was wrong here. Sensing that in the corner of my head, I took a second look at my upper arm. The girl's delicate feminine flower fingers were what were gripping my arm, even though I, all I had seen previously was a green guru hand. Who was she? Who was this girl? Was it a delusion? What kind of face did she have? What kind of face was she looking at me with? What was she doing here? Various doubts ran through my mind, but I couldn't bring myself to speak to her, so all I did was hang my head. Without noticing it, the dragging sound vanished. I noticed More that a while creep. ago, and uh, the girl in question is telling us to go back. Go back. As though to replace that, what came from her body. <laughs> that is a, brings up another question. Uh, how did she know who Takumi is? came up was the scent of blood. And, uh... It seems like the, uh, Seems like the, uh, end of Takumi's delusion here. And he, uh... Apparently finds himself, um... In what appears to be an internet cafe, if uh, my observation isn't failing me. I was sitting in front of a PC monitor. I poured some coke in my mouth to suppress my exhilaration and stretched widely in my reclining chair. It was a very real seeming flight of fancy, if I do say so myself. Yeah, that, what, what just happened was a delusion, and yet for some reason there were delusions within the delusion. But something about that delusion feels off, and I'm surprised that Takumi didn't realize what it was. Plus a high school girl with a mysterious air to her appeared in it. I thought about giving her a name and cultivating her in my imagination. I play around like this a lot. Sometimes I get a, I cast a pre-existing character like such as Siraton, but I got the sense that this girl was a different type from Siraton. Whatever the case, what's great about it is that I can do whatever the hell I want in my head, whether it's set in the second or third dimensions, and all that occurs in my delusions goes according to my godly will. I don't think that's... I think your delusions might uh, beg to differ with you on that one. <laughs> I muttered to myself without thinking, as if I were back in my base. When I remembered I was in a net cafe, I covered my mouth. I quickly studied my surroundings. Well, it's not like anyone was listening. As I hated going out, uh, out cafe was my sole amusement spot. It appears to be a uh, second, secondary portal into the world of Ensu. Now uh, we're actually going to time leap back to the choice um, that we had with Daisuke, so I'll be there in just a moment. Alright adventurers, now Takumi finds himself living in uh, one of his bad delusions, and the first part of the delusion is uh, pretty much verbatim the same as the uh, positive delusion, although uh, I don't really see how uh, Takumi could even remotely think of it as a uh, positive delusion, but uh, believe it or not, from here on out things will get a little bit different, and remember what I said about the uh, Bad delusions being trippy. Well, uh, things ultimately take a uh, 
turn for the worse and uh, Takumi's bad delusion, so uh, do not hesitate to turn back now. And that was a... Uh, That's a different sound. Before we were hearing the sound of something being dragged along the concrete, but uh, it stopped, but we actually heard a very faint sound that was quite different. With a brief glance, I saw that something had fallen at the end of the grimy road. Huh? Oh dear. At first, it looked like a regular convenience store bag with garbage inside it or, or something inside it. That's why I went walking towards it without thinking too much of it, or thinking much of it. When I saw it was several meters away, yeah, that is not a garbage bag. I realized it was the corpse of a cat. <laughs> Yeah. Blood, blood and excreta ran from it as it lay on the ground, and I hardly averted my eyes. And things are only going to get worse from here on out, because that clanging sound is getting closer. Revulsion made my skin shudder with goosebumps. I turned on my heel, and uh, lo and behold, there was another cat. There was a cat over there too. A living black cat. Its golden eyes, floating up out of the darkness, were watching me. No. It's staring into your soul, Takumi. When I spoke, the cat nimbly leapt away, vanishing into the shadows. Something about it gave me a bad feeling. A very bad feeling. I better hurry up and head out to the convenience store, but I couldn't use this road. The cat's body kept me from passing through. I had no choice but to take a detour. I noticed it as I was about to start walking. I had started getting the sense that I could hear a weird sound. I jerkily sucked in my breath and listened intently. It's getting closer. And uh, that was a cat's uh, screech there. Right before the delusion cut off. And we're back here again at that cafe. Saiyakuda. Yeah, the complete opposite of uh, the previous delusion. I was sitting in front of a PC monitor. I poured some coke in my m mouth to wet my dry throat and let out a sigh as in my reclining chair. I'd had a ni nasty flight of fancy. It must have been because I heard all kinds of gory stuff from yesterday to today. I often get influenced by my surroundings and end up imagining things that normally wouldn't even enter my head. By and large, they make me sick, never mind the fact that they're my own delusions. Lo and behold, Takumi, you're not the god of your own delusions as you believed. My imaginative powers might be a tad too strong. The less information I had, the greater the likelihood that those kind of delusions would come floating into my head. There have been times when I got so scared, I got myself so scared I screamed. My base aside, if I did that kind of thing at school or a place like the Nick Cafe I was currently in, it'd make an awful scene. And lo and behold, back to reality. And that is going to be it for this episode of Let's Play Chaos Head. We had two delusions, one good, one bad. And we only get one delusion for each. And, uh, that's not going to be the, uh, only delusion choice that Takumi gets to make um, 
minor spoiler warning there, but then you should already have figured that out from this point forward. But when we return adventurers, uh, Takumi Nishijo is going to uh, take reality head on and uh, address Daisuke Misumi directly over his uh, rather unsavory comments at Tsurume Academy. As always, dear adventurers, until next we meet.